<laughs> that is what we're going to do right now. Okay. Oh, no, no more story problems. Yep, story problems. I think, I think these are actually a little bit easier because oh, mostly yeah, what we're... Yeah, yeah. Oh, enthusiasm in a math class. That's always nice. <laughs> you guys tell us these aren't bad. Okay, we'll here's... Also. Thank you very much. Maybe later. Okay, here's what it basically comes down to. For each one of the problems that follows, we're going to come up with a quadratic equation. So we're going to come up with a quadratic function that we could graph or think about how we'd graph it. <clears throat> and it's going to be shaped like this. It's either going to be a parabola that opens up, in which case it has a minimum, or it's going to be a parabola that opens down, in which case it's going to have a maximum. And remember, we kind of made a big deal about figuring out what was the max or min and where did it occur. And we made a, a distinction between the two of those things. Where it occurs is the x-coordinate, and what the maximum or minimum value is is the y-coordinate. Okay, So the max or min is the y-coordinate, Okay, or sometimes we refer to that as the f of x, and it occurs at x equals whatever that number happens to be. Okay, So it's at x equals the x-coordinate of the vertex. Let me write that. Okay, <clears throat> so the max or the minimum is the y value or the function value, okay, and it occurs at the x-coordinate of the vertex. So we find the vertex, the max or min will be the y-coordinate of the vertex, and the minimum will be the x, or sorry, <clears throat> where it occurs will be the x-coordinate of the vertex. So let's take a look at this first example right here. It says the lifeguard has 100 meters, uh, <clears throat> 100 meter of rope together flotation devices with which to cordon off a rectangular swimming area at North Beach. If the shoreline forms one side of the rectangle, what dimensions will maximize the side of the size of the area for swimming? So we're going to use, and I don't know if you can see this, so there's a W here and a W there, and this is L for length. We want to maximize this area. Okay, so here's what I'd like you to do. If we were going to maximize the area of a rectangle, we first of all need a formula for the area of a rectangle. And what's the formula for the area of a rectangle? <laughs> length times width. So we have length times width. Okay, but here's the problem, just like we've encountered before. I don't like it when there are two variables here. So I want to change this so there's one variable. And a piece of information that I haven't used yet is that if I take this rope, this rope, and this rope and add it together, I should have 400 feet. So that would mean W plus W plus L equals 400. Or that would be 2W plus L equals 400. Wait, what be 100? Oh, 100. Sorry, I'm thinking of a different. <laughs> I magically increased the size of the rope. I, I do a similar problem in another class, and it, uh, it, they've got 400. They have 400 feet of fence is what it is. Okay? But same type of problem. So how can I use this piece of information right here and this piece of information right here to make another equation that I could actually solve? Quadratic formula is going to enter in there somewhere. How could I replace? The problem with this is there are two variables over here. It's not y as a function of x or something like that. Okay, I've got an L and a W over here. So what could I do with this? To change the way this one looks, yeah. Well, you could make it so like all the L's are on one side and it's like over here. That's it, okay. So the key here is to use substitution. So I'm going to subtract 2W from each side. So this is going to be L equals 100 minus 2W. And then wherever there's an L, I'm going to put this in its place. So the area equals 100 minus 2w times w. Now, if it helps, you can think of it this way. This is y equals 100 minus 2x times x. Now, we chose these variables this way for a reason. w reminds us of something in the story problem. It's the width. So it probably would be better to do it this way. But if you want to think of it this way, that's fine. So if I were to distribute through, I'd get 100x 
minus 2x squared. So y equals negative 2x squared plus 100 if I wrote it in 100x if I wrote it in descending order. Now, let's think about this for just a second. What shape is this? If I were to graph this, what shape is it? It's a parabola. It's a quadratic. Which way does it open? Opens down. Okay. So if it's a parabola that opens down, does it have a maximum? Yeah, it's going to look like this. The max is going to occur to, at the vertex. Now, I'm going to show you to solve this two different ways. So I'm going to write this problem. I'm going to go back and we're going to think of this one now. This is going to be negative 2w squared plus 100w. Now, if you want to write it like this and solve it like we did over here, that would be fine. Okay, But what I'd prefer is you think of it this way, at least on some of these. If you need to multiply it together to think, oh, yeah, that's a parabola that opens down, that's fine. But this is already factored. And that's already factored. So if it's in factored form, you can actually find the x-intercepts pretty darn quickly. What's the x-intercept that comes from this one? Zero. Zero. Or I guess the w-intercept. What would the w-intercept that comes from this one? Okay, opposite of this number, divided by that number right there, so it's going to be 50. So if I have a parabola that opens down, that crosses at 0 and at 50, the only way this can happen is if it goes like this. Now, if that's 0 and that's 50, where would the vertex be? It would be at the top. It would be right in the middle. Right at what, Christopher? Right at 25. So here's our axis of symmetry of x equals 25. The x-coordinate of the vertex would be 25, or in this case, the w-coordinate of the vertex would be 25. Now, if I need to plug that in in order to figure out, well, let's see, that would just figure out the area for me. It wouldn't tell me what the length was. And let's make sure we read the instructions and see what it says. It says, what dimensions will maximize the area for swimming? It doesn't even want to know what the maximum area is. It just wants to know what dimensions will. So we just found when W equals 25, I'll change that. When W equals 25, that's when we have the maximum area. Now, there are two ways to do this. If that's 25, can you see that? Nope, not really. If that's 25 then that's 25. And if I've got 100 feet of fence or 100 meters or whatever it is of this rope, if I use 25 here and 25 here, how much is left for this? That's got to be 50. Okay? So the answer is 25 by 50. And it, it was meters, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was meters. Okay? So there's the answer. You can also do this. Once I know what W is, I can come up here and I can plug it in and I, I can say, well, L equals 100 minus 2 times W, which is, whoops, 25. So 100 minus 50 equals 50, okay? Either way, you get 25 by 50 meters is the optimum size of this rectangular shape here. Any questions there? Okay, watch. I'm going to solve this one more way. I've got this written in standard form. If all you need to know is where the vertex is, we had a little formula that told us where the vertex was. What was it? Negative b over 2a, or opposite of b over 2a. And then we plugged this in to figure out what the y-coordinate of the vertex was. It didn't ask us to do that on this problem. But let's take a look. b is 100. So that would be opposite of 100 over 2 times a. So that would be 2 times negative 2. So that's negative 100 over negative 4. That's 25. You can get it that way also. Okay? Thinking of what the graph looks like is, though, is really valuable. And you really do have to think on every one of them. Is this a parabola that opens up or does it open down? Okay? And that's determined by that leading coefficient here if it's negative. Okay, any questions? Okay, go ahead and flip that over.
Okay, on this next example, it says, after the admission fee was dropped, attendance at the Indianapolis Museum of Art began to rise uh, after several years of decline. The number of museum admissions in thousands T years after the year 2000 can be approximated by this equation right here, this little function. In what year was the museum attendance the lowest? And how many people went to the museum in that year? Okay. Why is this an M of T? What does the M stand for? Museum. Okay. What does the T stand for? Time. So in this equation, you plug in the time, and it will tell you what the museum attendance is. You plug in the time, it will tell you what the museum attendance is. Um, you have to plug in a time that's after the year 2000. So if I plugged in a, let's see, a 7, what year does that represent? 2007. 2007. Okay? Any questions? Okay. They've already given us the equation. They already gave us the function. Amelia, what shape is this? Is it, a it is a parabola. How can you tell? It's it's in this form. Okay, it starts out with a as a, a square of the variable. So t squared, x squared, q squared, whatever it is. Okay, if it doesn't have any cubes or anything, it's got to have a, a variable squared in order to be a quadratic. Okay, um, once you know what shape it is, let's think about this. Opens. In this case, it's positive, so it opens up. So it's going to look something like this. It's going to have not a maximum, but it's going to have a minimum. Or in other words, there's going to be a lowest number of people that attend, and that's going to occur at the vertex. So on this problem, is any of this hard? Okay. It says in what year? Remember, this is a T-axis, and this is a museum attendance axis. All this wants is the t coordinate of the vertex. Do you want to graph it? Do you want to factor it? Do you want to find, try and find x-intercepts, y-intercepts, all that sort of stuff? Do we need that? We don't. What do we need? Only need vertex. And if all you need is the vertex, what's the quickest way to get to the vertex? Opposite of b over 2a. So that's going to be the opposite of negative 320 over 2a. So that's going to be 2 times 32. So that's going to be 320 over, that's a 64. So that is a 5, right? Isn't that a 5? So that's what t equals. But remember, t equals the number of years after the year 2000. So what year is this? The year 2005. Now, take a good look at that. Is that story problem very bad? It's pretty easy, isn't it? Okay. Are there any questions on that one? If they give you the equation, it ought to be easy. Because we've got lots of tools for figuring those out. If we need the vertex, we've got this negative b over 2a. If we need to graph it, we've got all the tools that we've typically worked with. If we have to find x-intercepts, we could try factoring, we could try the quadratic formula, all that sort of stuff. Okay, any questions? Okay, let's slide down and take a look at the next one. What is the maximum product of two numbers that add up to be 18? What numbers yield this product? In other words, what numbers produce this product? What are the numbers? Okay, okay. how many numbers are there? Two. Do we know what either one of them are? No, but we do know something about them. We know that they add up to be 18. So let's say I take x plus y, and that equals 18. Now, I want the maximum product. So their product is, what does product mean? Times. Their product is x times y. Okay. Again, I use p for product. Any questions? What's wrong with this? What's wrong with having that expression like that? Do we like more than one variable? No. In fact, we couldn't, we couldn't graph this or solve this if it has more than one variable. But am I stuck with this? 
Sid? Substitution. What do you want to substitute for? Okay, he wants to substitute for x. I'm okay with that. So if he wants to substitute for x, that means x is going to be equal to 18 minus y. So wherever there's an x, I'm going to put 18 minus y. So here's what I get. P equals 18 minus y times y. Now, please don't let this blow your mind. Okay? I realize we normally have x's here and y's over here. We could have solved this for y and then plugged in and we would have had x times uh, 18 minus x and that would have been just fine. I can do that in just a second if you want. Okay, But that really shouldn't matter because up here we solved an equation with m's and t's in it. We ought to be able to solve one that with p's and y's. Okay, Watch please. Let's see if we can think our way through this. If I multiplied these together, I would get p equals negative y squared plus 18y. Now, if you just want to think about that and not write it out, that's fine with me. What shape is this? Parabola. That's kind of a tough question in this section, right? Aren't they all going to be parabolas? Okay. Opens down. Okay, And if it opens down, it's going to have a max and the max will be at the vertex now if you want to, again write all this down if you want but you don't have to if you just want to look at that and say hey that would be negative y squared that's going to be a parabola it will open down and if it opens down it's going to have a max so all i need to do is find where the vertex is take a good look this is already factored what's the zero that comes from this factor 18 What's the one that comes from this one? Zero. Zero, 18. It's got to cross this horizontal axis there. And then it opens down. The only way that can happen is if it looks like this. And despite my crappy graph, I'll adjust by uh, making that my axis of symmetry. If this is zero and this is 18, where, where does the vertex occur? At nine. So this would be nine comma... Well, let's see. If y is 9, I could plug 9 in here, and that would give me my answer. So this would be 18 minus 9 is 9, times 9 is 81. So this is one of the numbers. This can't possibly be the other number. It must be the product. So x is y is whoops y is and the product is product is 81 and the two numbers are 9 so the two numbers that add up to be 18 that make the largest product possible are 9 and 9 you could do 1 and 17 they add up to 18 but what's their product 17 not very big okay now, again, if you wanted to solve this and do it this way, you could do x times x, oops, excuse me, 18 minus x. If you're more comfortable, it's, it's just a difference in the variables you use, but you could do it that way also. Yeah? So, sorry, I kind of went ahead, but I used, I factored through and then I just did the... Negative b over 2a? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, watch. Here's b and here's a. So negative b, negative 18, over 2 times a. So that would be negative 18 over negative 2, which is 9. You can get it that way, too. Um, I do like you thinking about the shape of the graph, though, okay? And what maybe the x-intercepts are, if they're relatively easy to find. Okay, any questions? Okay, let's take a look at the next one. A furniture builder is designing a rectangular end table with a perimeter of 128 inches, what dimensions will yield the maximum area? Okay, first of all, this is a story problem. It describes a situation. If we can, what's usually the best way to start? Draw a picture. Draw a picture. What kind of picture are we drawing here? 
a rectangle. Do I know what any of the sides are? I don't. So let's do x here, y here, x here, and y here. Do I know anything about the sides? They all have to add up to, all have to, add up to be 128. So if I do um, 2x's plus 2y's, that equals 128. I know I want to maximize the area, right? Maximize the area. So what's the area of this rectangle? X times Y. Is that all right? Perimeter is 128. We know that. The area would just be X times Y. We're not sure what the area is because we don't know what shape it is. What's wrong with this? Two variables. It would be nice if we could put it in terms of one variable. Now, last time we solved for X and solved the problem in terms of Y, Let's solve this for y so that we can do it in terms of x. Everybody probably be more comfortable with that, right? So I'm going to solve this for y. That's going to be 2y equals 128 minus 2x. And then I'm going to divide everything by 2, and I get y equals 64 minus x. So then I can plug this. I, I did that right, didn't I? Okay. x, 64 minus x. Okay, if you're working ahead, I'm proud of you. You know what you're doing as long as you're getting it right. Everybody look up here. need you to stop for just a second. Okay, um, you can set it up this way. I would like you to be aware of, I don't have to do the equation like this. Because this is a rectangle, I could make my work a little bit easier. In the long run, come up with a better way to represent these things. We actually started talking about this. Um, in, uh, I think it was 8.4 when we did those applications. Okay, how much distance do I have from here to here? Just half of the rectangle. How much of the perimeter would that be? Half of it, right? So that would be 64. So if this is X, if I used, say, 20 here, what's left for this one? If I use 20 here, 44 would be left here. How are you getting that? Subtracting, right? So one thing you could do is, rather than start off like this, you could say, you know what? If this is x and half of the perimeter is 64, this has got to be 64 minus x. It's got to be 64 minus x. It can't be x minus 64. Okay? And then what's the area? Base times height. See how you arrive at the same thing? It's just a little bit quicker. Might be worth your time to know that. Okay. So all we need to do is just finish this off. If you want to distribute through, that's fine. But remember, this is going to be a negative x squared. It's a parabola. And it opens down, right? What's the x-intercept here? And here? positive 64. So if it does that, if it hits 0 and 64, where does the vertex have to be? At x equals 32. Okay, now, if you want to distribute through, if you want to use negative b over 2a and do it that way, that's totally fine. What we end up is taking half of 64 anyway. So, let's make sure we answer the question. What dimensions will yield the maximum area? What did we figure out x was? 32. So if this is 32, this is 32, and how much did we say we had between the two of these? 64. So if this is 32, this has got to be 32. Okay. So it's 32 by 32. Now, does anybody want to say that's not a rectangle? They set us up. Remember, a square is just a special type of rectangle. Okay. Are there any questions there? Sure? Okay. Okay. Ginger is fencing in a rectangular garden using the side of her house as one side of the rectangle. What is the maximum area she can enclose with 40 feet of fence? What should the dimensions of the uh, 
garden B in order to yield this area. So find the dimensions, multiply them together, get the area. Does this look familiar at all? Okay, what are you going to start with? Okay, go ahead, draw a picture, do it on your own, please. When you get done with your picture and your neighbor gets done with your picture and you've labeled them, because we're going to have to have some variables, compare your drawings, make sure you're on the right track. Okay, there's the house. The garden's going to look like this. This is a lot like the, the first one, that swimming problem. Okay, now, choose your variables in a, in, a, in a smart way. If I like X, should I put an X here or here? One or two? I should put it here. Can somebody tell me why that would be the best way to do it if I like working with X? Yeah. Okay, so, so this would be y over here, okay? Or if I choose this to be x, I know that's already x. And let's be smart about this. How many x's have I already used in the perimeter? I've used two x's. How much fence do I have? How could I represent this? Uh, 40, minus 40 minus 2 x's. So if this was 5... I'd use 5 here and 5 there. That would be 10. That would leave 30 for this. If I plug in a 5, that gives me the answer. <coughs> now, if you want to do it like this, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. Do y here, x here, and x here, and do y plus 2x equals 40. If I solve for y, look what I get. I get y equals 40 minus 2x, just like I did here. So again, it's worth figuring out if I've got the total perimeter, whatever it happens to be, and I've already used some of it, it's going to be the old total minus what I've already used. So in this case, I have 40 feet of fence. Subtract what you already used. You already used 2x's, so we're going to do 40 minus 2x for that. Area. Okay, I could, I could do uh, area equals x times y, but then what does y equal? Plug it in here, or I can look right there. 40 minus 2x. Careful here. This is a little bit different than the one, uh, the last couple we've done. What's the x-intercept? 0. 20. Which way does it open? Multiply there. Negative 2x squared. It's going to open down, so it's going to look like this. It would have to if we're going to have a... What does it say? Maximum? It's got to open down. Okay, so double check yourself that way. If this is 0 and this is 20, where is this? That's a 10. Plug in a 10 here, or wait a minute. I already drew a picture of what this looks like. If this is 10, oops, let me change colors so we can see that a little better. If that's 10, then that's 10. What's this? That's 20. So what's the area? Okay, the area is 200 because it's 20 by 10, okay? So these are the dimensions. That's the area. The dimensions are 10 feet by 20 feet. The area is 200 feet. Any questions there? Okay, watch. Just for the heck of it, what would happen if I plug in a 10 here? This is 40 minus 20, so that's going to be 20 times 10, 200. The area would be 200 when the height here, when the x is 10. And then you can figure out the other dimensions by plugging it in. There's the answer, 220 by 10. Questions? Okay. Um, I just want you to watch here. Um, you have, I, I think you've got a couple problems like this on your Math Excel homework. And it is math Excel homework, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think it is. Okay, so if you take a look at this, all it says here is 
figure out whether this data could be modeled with a linear model. So like y equals mx plus b. Why do we call it linear again? Because it makes a line, right? Or a quadratic equation like this. So let's see. And then it says a is greater than 0. So if a is greater than 0, that would be a parabola that opens up. And if A is less than 0, that's a problem that opens down. Oops, opens down. So take a look at this data right here. Linear, okay? So this would be F of X equals MX plus B. Let's look at this one. Okay, now there's not much to it, but it kind of goes like this. It's definitely not linear, right? Okay, so it's going to be a quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c, and a is going to be greater than zero. How about this? Okay, well, yeah, it's, it's not a parabola, but uh, you remember that first project we did? Could you fit a line roughly in the middle? Yes. Okay, so this is roughly linear, so we do mx plus b. And what's this one? Looks pretty much like a parabola, like a quadratic. So that would be ax squared plus bx plus c. And a would have to be less than 0. a would have to be negative. OK? Any questions? OK. All right. Then here's the last problem. Okay. Ready? No questions? OK. So this says, find the quadratic. Whoops. Should have an F in front there. F of X equals AX squared plus BX plus C that fits these data points. So I want a parabola, a quadratic equation like this, that goes through this point, this point, and this point. Any ideas? We could try and we could try and sketch what it would look like so we could plot the points on an XY plane. Okay, I mentioned something uh, probably the first week of school, and I said, please don't forget this. Okay, and people forget it all the time. Kind of like, uh, let's see, what are those three functions with domain issues? Oh, see, we should just all be clamoring to answer this. Division, can't divide by zero. Even roots, can't take the even root of a negative. And logarithms, which we're going to deal with in the next chapter. Oh, let's try that again. Logarithms. Yeah, there we go. Okay. We did a bunch of graphing, and I made this point that every graph makes a shape. We did a bunch of linear graphs to start this course. Okay. And I said, don't forget that the reason a point is on the graph is because it works in the equation. And if it's on the graph, or sorry, if, it's, if it works in the equation, then it's on the graph. Well, this is exactly what we have here. What we're saying is this point works in that equation. This point works in that equation, and this point works in that equation. And what we mean by it works is when you plug it in, it makes the equation true. So this is an x, and that's an f of x. Or in other words, that's a y. So that one says, I get a 4 out when I plug a 1 in. So this is a times 1 squared plus b times 1 plus c. This next one says, I get out a negative 2 when I plug a negative 1 in. So that would be a times negative 1 squared plus b times negative 1, whoops, b times negative 1 plus c. And this one says, I get out a 13 when I plug a 2 in. So that would be a times 2 squared plus b times 2 plus c. Now, exactly how does that help? Well, watch. This means I get a squared plus b, or sorry, that's just an a. That's an a, that's a b, plus a c equals 4. This one is an a minus a b plus a c equals negative 2. And this one says, what does this one say? 
4a, 2b, plus c, equals 13. Yep. So this is a 3 by 3 system, and we're going to use elimination in order to solve that. You only have 18 problems like this on your assignment, so don't worry. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Okay? So here's what I'd like you to think of. First of all, we've done problems like this before. We've solved three equations with three unknowns. We call them three by three systems of equations. And we did solve them using elimination. We basically eliminated one variable at a time. So we went from a three by three to a two by two until we finally had an equation with one variable and we could solve it. But this idea of, hey, that point works in that equation, so let's plug it in and I can find missing coefficients is an idea and a concept that comes back. We do something kind of similar to this in 1050. It's a little more bizarre application of this idea, but it's the same type of thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this. Now, on this particular system, what variable is probably the easiest to get rid of? Probably B. I'm going to take equation number 1, 2, and 3. I'm going to take equation 1, and I'm going to add it to equation number 2. So if I do that, I get two A's, no B's, two C's, and it equals two. Okay, then I'm going to take, remember, if I used one and two, I've got to use some other combination for my other uh, elimination problem. So I'm going to use two and three. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take two and I'm going to multiply it by two. Is that all right? Watch, please. Watch. I'm going to take equation 2, I'm going to multiply it by 2, and I'm going to add it to equation 3. Is everybody okay with this shorthand? So 2 times equation 2. 2a, two 2b, minus 2b, 2c, negative 4. And then I'm just going to rewrite equation 3 because it didn't change at all. So this is going to be 4a plus 2b, that's what I like, and this is going to be a 13. So notice I multiplied equation 2 by 2, and I left equation 3 alone, but then I'm going to add those together, and here's what I get. I get 6a, no b's, I get 3c, and I get, that's a 9, right? Okay. I'm going to rewrite a copy of that right here. 6a, 3c, and 9. Is this coming back a little bit? Yeah. Okay. Yes, sort of. I now need to get rid of one of these variables. Of A or C, which is probably the easiest? A is probably the easiest. Can somebody remind us why that's the easiest? Zach? Because you only have to change the first equation, not the second. I only have to change this equation. I'm going to make this a negative 6A. If I were to get rid of the Cs, I'd have to turn them both into 6s. One would have to be positive. One would have to be negative. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this equation, and I'm going to multiply it by... Negative 3, so that's negative 6a, that's negative 6c, and this is going to be negative 6. And look what I get here. When I add these together, I get no a's, I get negative 3c, and I get uh, 3 over here. So what does that tell me? C equals, make sure you get it right, negative 1. I can then take this, and I'm going to plug it in right here. So that means 2a plus 2, whoops, that would be minus 2, wouldn't it? I'll write the words. So that means 2a minus 2 equals 2. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides. 2a equals 4, so a equals 2. Bit of a mess here, should have left myself more room. And then how do I finish this off? Okay, I'm going to take that a, plug it in right here. This c, plug it in right here. So here's what I get. See, that's really big. Uh, this was a 2, right? A was a 2 plus B. And C was a negative 1 equals 4. So this is going to be B equals, let's see, I'll do a little more work. Uh, B plus 1 equals 4. So B equals 3. So F of X is 
2a, whoops, 2x squared. b was 3, 3x, and c was negative 1. If you plug any one of those points in, it will work in that equation. Okay. Any questions? How many of those do we have in I think you've just got one. Yeah. <laughs> Good question. No, sorry. There's not. Okay, now, I, I am going to say this. Um, over the next couple days, I'm going to talk to you about your grades, whether or not you should take 1050 or College Prep 2. Um, if, if you don't like thinking this hard, uh, you're probably going to get through 1050 and then stop there. Okay? Not that every math problem you do past 1010 looks like this. But this type of stuff comes up a lot, where you have to use all of the skills that you know, that idea about, gosh, if it works in the equation, it's on the graph, and if it's on the graph, it works in the equation, and I had to solve this system of equations, okay? I mean, if that's not your bag, that's okay, but you will see some of that in 1050, so get ready for it, all right? Okay, how you doing there, Sarah? Great. Great, what are you doing? Okay, that would be very rude. I wouldn't do it. Thanks. Okay.